my gosh, it's here. The best day of my life every year is starting in 10 seconds. 10, What's up, party people? Welcome to the Drew Dillman YouTube channel. We're at Gravel Worlds in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is the first time I've done this event, 150 miles, almost completely on gravel roads. I'm running 36 slicks. The challenge, Strada Bianca, with some XP casing. And to be quite honest, this was the roughest part of the course, right here at the beginning. I was a little nervous that I might flat a half a mile into this thing. Now, the pre-race plan was to get off the front with my buddy Chase Ward. We're gonna make the early break. He's been, he's done this a couple times, and he's gotten a couple top five finishes, I think a couple top three finishes because of this strategy. Now, this strategy doesn't always work. I, I, we're not necessarily wanting to make the early break to try to make that break stick all the way to the finish, but what it does is it makes the race way more sustained of an effort, meaning, uh, way less spikes and when you spike you burn exponentially more energy so it's a more of a sustained effort you avoid a lot of the chaos of the peloton so if you get into an early break with five dudes you don't really have to worry about chaos and crashes and all that kind of stuff and then another big thing is tv time because legit this is a full the live stream of this race was legit and chase got a lot of tv time now he was very persistent in trying to make this make this work we had we had attacked a few times together um you had just watched him attack into the rough part of the pavement and i just didn't want to go there i did drop my chain so i had to chase for about two and a half minutes but it wasn't that hard of an effort i chased back up to the group Now, a lot of times in these gravel events, you don't really want to do a crit style attack. Um, I, I'm kind of just slow rolling. Me and, and me and Chase would just slow roll off the front. Of course, we're pedaling harder, but we're not standing up and making it super, uh, uh, we're not making it look like we're attacking. Because sometimes if you do those crazy attacks, it scares the group and they jump right on you and they chase you down. But if you can slow roll and attack, so like sit down and put down some power, they might let you just roll right off the front without thinking twice about it. All right, one of the weird things about this race is that they have this foot down rule where if you come to a busy intersection, everybody has to put their foot down. But realistically, the pros are not going to do that. And so they have this whole initiative of like every last rider and they want it to be completely fair for everybody. So to make the pros stop, just like the amateurs have to stop at those intersections. But like you can see right here, they're following us with a full camera live stream. And so there's obviously some kind of a difference between the pros and the amateurs if they're willing to film the entire race for the pros um, so i just feel like they're sacrificing safety when they could be having the lead moto stop traffic or police stop traffic but they're not they're trying to be too fair and they're sacrificing safety now that lead break that you could just see is up the road a little bit they're starting to get that initial gap that they need it's starting to stretch out some and so it's looking like i might have missed that early break All right, let me unpack what just happened right there. Papa Pete Stetna was giving me a hard time because he looked at me and flicked me through and I looked back at him and said, no, I'm not pulling through. And I'll tell you why. 
because there was a there was the the early break has already gone up the road. I think there's maybe five or six guys in that main breakaway with Chase Ward, Joe Gettle, Daxton Mock, and a couple other guys, Ethan Overson. But now there's a chase group of a Pass Normal guy from Europe and one other rider that's trying to bridge across. Pete says, don't you know that that's dangerous? Come on, buddy. Like, you need to pull through. We need to go chase that down. So I respond to him and say, well, I know that you think it's dangerous as well. And that past normal guy is a big threat to Pete Stetna because he's probably stronger than Pete. Well, Pete and the past normal guy are stronger than I am. And so I want Pete, because he's freaking out, to chase down that breakaway because I know he's worried about it. So I can sit here and flick him through and say, I'm not going to pull because I know that you want to pull that back. So you can do it. Because both of those guys are stronger than me and I want them both to be more tired than me at the end of this race. So I have no problem saying, nah, I ain't working. It's almost even as if that past normal guy that's up the road a little bit is a teammate of mine. Because I want Pete to chase that guy down. I don't want to do that. So, having just got my adrenaline a little cooking, I guess I, I might have done the, the, the very logical thing and I immediately attack, which maybe I just saw an open opportunity, but I went for it and I sent it. Um, and really, ultimately, all that did was help us to chase down the past normal guy. So Pete ended up getting what he wanted anyways. then we're just really going slow here so I am like all right if we're gonna ride this slow I'm gonna try to attack again so just a few moments later I attack nobody comes with me I drop straight into the air bars and for 35 minutes I'm gonna ride at a 336 watt which is about a 0.9 intensity factor which is a pretty hard effort but at this point I'm thinking maybe it's early enough in the race it's about 35 miles in that I could chase that early break and bridge across but I don't I end up getting caught by about eight or nine riders, but all the strong guys are here. You got your past normal guy. You got Eno, who ends up getting second place right there to my left. Pete Stetna, Griffin Easter are both in this, and then John Borselman ends up bridging across to us. So this looks like a really strong chase group of about 10 riders. And at this point, I'm thinking we could probably chase down that lead break with these riders here. I'm also totally cool to sit at the back for a bit because I did just solo for about 30 minutes by myself. Now, what happened here, a Ben Oliver, the above and beyond rider, nearly died. It was close. There were some cars coming down a hill, and we were going down a hill, and I think it was a four-way stop, but neither one of us could stop completely. A couple riser, couple riders bolt across the intersection get and get in front of a couple of the cars. There were three of them. Uh, and, and Pete Stetna's words, they were dukes of hazarding it, which is pretty accurate. And Ben Oliver trying to stop is sliding, and his front wheel ends up just getting demolished by the last car. And it was close. I mean, if you're if you're close enough to a car that it's going to hit your front wheel and just straight up to blow it up, then you're talking just a few inches further forward, and that would have been his body. It was it was scary. I'm not going to lie. And we talk about it a lot on the Bonk Bros podcast if you want to see more about it. But I do want to pause and say Ben Oliver was okay. They even had this video of him a week later at the Gateway Crits, and he was racing sprinting totally fine um just so that y'all know he did not die he is he's alive and well uh, we did roll into a cyclocross section but back to the whole um almost getting hit by a car thing we did slow roll for about four or five miles which only let the breakaway gap just go out probably they probably gained two or three minutes just from us barely pedaling because we didn't know what to do we were like do we stop do we what what and so eventually we just got back to racing and now we're on this cyclocross course we rode through a barn that was kind of cool um i had no idea that this was in the, in the race to be quite honest but that was cool i'm down with that
At about mile 84 now, I attack again. I know that there's an aid station coming up pretty soon. You've got Eno, he's come with me. We both have TT bars, that's an advantage for us. But I'm kind of thinking I just want to get a buffer so that when I stop for water, the whole the whole group doesn't blow by me. But I kind of initiate the entire like crumbling of the peloton. Pete and Michael Garrison roll up to us, and I'm I'm thinking what turned into a buffer is now turning into a legit chase group. So I stop to grab water. I'm stopped for about 15 or 20 seconds to fill up my bottles. Now's a good time to tell you about my hydration plan. I started with a hydration pack that had about 360 grams of carbs mixed into it. That's 12 scoops of flow. I had one bottle with 120. I had a gel mix in my pocket with two things of chews. And then at that final aid station, I chugged a Coke. All of that equals 740 carbs, about 105 per hour. After I stop at the aid, you can see that the main group has caught me and I'm feeling pretty good at this point. I just didn't want to run out of water. I know it's going to be super hot. So eventually we get into this break of 10. Um, it's got Finsterwald in there. It's got Matt Stevens and eventually quote of the day has made my day. This was awesome. I'm pulling pretty hard and I flick Russell through and he doesn't pull through. He says, man, I can't pull through if you're going to pull that hard. I'm like, dude, that's the biggest compliment I could have ever had. So here we go. We roll into the final aid, 120 miles. Me and Matt Stevens are rolling in. He's bridged up to us. It's the three of us. I grab some Coke. I grab, uh, fill up my bottles with water. It's super hot. I was dying to stop and get some more water. Um, we ended up all kind of coming back together. Finsterwald waited for us. And so here's me and Russell. We end up riding like basically the last 30 miles, 40 miles together. You know, in typical Dizzle fashion, 20 miles later, I'm like suffering and I'm like, hey man, you're about to drop me. Can you just not, can, we were like five miles from the finish and I'm like, hey man, can you just not drop me? Cause I just want to finish with you and I won't spring you at the end. And so then he didn't drop me and we finished together. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you had that conversation with him in the race? Yeah. Five miles to go. I could tell that he was going harder on some of the climbs. And on one of the you climbs... You said, I... can you please not drop, dude? <laughs> I didn't say those exact words. What? I was like, hey, I would have dropped... I was like, hey, man, I'm not going to sprint you at the end, but I would love to finish behind you. Can can we just stay together to the finish? And he said, <laughs> yeah, sure. I <laughs> And then he fizz, Cringe, and, bro. And then I, would, he fizz, I would just, guys, I would just love to finish behind you. That would just be so amazing if I could just finish dude, right if behind. He went, if he went, like, dude. if he went 300 watts on the next climb, he for sure would have dropped me, and I probably, it, it was like, I might not have even finished. Like, he, I needed him. Another really good uh, fencer wall quote was when we were in the uh, chase group with me and Matt Stevens, and I think there was one other guy that had arrow bars. He had looked at all the guys with arrow bars and said, "Hey, man, you guys." need to pull together because y'all's pulls are like hero pulls for the group so in other words he said y'all are faster with your arrow bars dude you could have run them too if they're faster why wouldn't you so here we are rolling into the finish um we're gonna do the fist bump because it's the spirit of gravel he fist bumps me i'm not gonna contest him for this sprint he did the nice thing and didn't drop me and, uh, and y'all like to see Russell Finsterwald finish right ahead of me. It's better for the views, right? So here we go. We're rolling into the finish. It was a long day. It was hot. Yep. All right, the final stats of the day. 7.02 was my ride time. 7.04 was my official time. 378 TSS. The, the, the funny thing about the stats is that my normalized power for the whole race was 275. But if you can tell, after about 100 miles, it drops off significantly. Uh, you can see the lack of orange in the second half of that chart down there. That says that I barely touched my threshold after 100 miles because I was cracked. So for the first 100 miles, I actually normalized pretty darn close to 300 watts. And then for the last 50 miles, I normalized about 230. Not exactly the best pacing strategy, but you live and you learn. Lessons learned from this race, make the early break. I'd like to thank all my sponsors for making this season possible. Couldn't do it without all of them. If you guys liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.